are about to hear a romantic drama, Some Men Are Different, adapted from a story in Street and Smith's Love Story magazine and featuring the love story girl in the role of Lisa Cover. This is the love story of Lisa Coburn, lovely, well-bred and rich, who all her life had nothing but pleasant things happen to her until the day of her wedding, when the bridegroom, Meade Warner, failed to show up for the very good reason that just an hour before the ceremony he had eloped with another girl named Daphne. The shock had soured Lisa's otherwise kind and friendly disposition. She became a man-hater. Oh, not the kind that avoided men, but the kind that goes ruthlessly about seeing how many scalps she can collect. We now find Lisa Coburn and her Aunt Katie recuperating on a large and elegant dude ranch. But even here, Lisa has gone on with her collection of masculine scalps, much to Aunt Katie's annoyance. Lisa. Yes, Aunt Katie? I do wish you'd get over the craving for breaking men's hearts. Why? If it amuses me. But it's so unkind. Oh, nonsense. It's good for them. Every man should have his heart broken at least once before he gets married. Let him know what it feels like. Their future wives should thank me for breaking them in. Lisa, for a fundamentally nice girl, you've developed the hardest, most unfeeling streak of cruelty. Oh, what's cruel about it? Men are all alike, Aunt Katie. There isn't one of them you couldn't steal away from the woman he's supposed to be in love with, if you put your mind to it. But that's just it, Lisa. What's just what? You're not stealing Nord Kendall away from any other girl. Oh, so it's Nord you're worrying about. It is. I don't believe he's ever been in love before. Well, and it's high time he learned what it's all about. I wouldn't trifle with him, Lisa. Lord isn't like the men you've known back east. He's always different. Oh, now, don't tell me he's the strong, silent type. Well, yes, he is. <laughs> it's dangerous to fool with men like that, Lisa. They don't fall in and out of love as if it were a hot bath. Oh, nonsense. There's nothing different about Nord. All men are alike. A moon, a sigh, a flutter of an eyelash, and they fall like a ton of bricks. It's so doggone easy, it's boring. I had hoped Nord would be a little bit different from the rest, but... I hope he's just the same. I wouldn't be responsible for turning a man like that down after you've led him on the way you have. Fiddlesticks, it'll do him good. It's good for any man to find out he's not as irresistible as he thinks he is. Still brooding about that good-for-nothing Mead Warner. I wish you wouldn't, Lisa. He's married and that's that. Even if you could get him back, it wouldn't be worth it. Maybe not, but I intend to do it just the same. Lisa! Did I tell you I saw him just before we left New York? You did not. Well, I I sort of mentioned the fact that we'd be out here all summer, and I thought a little of this western air might do him good. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't turn up any day now. Lisa, you're a heartless wretch. I hope that Nord Kendall blacks your eye for you. Oh, (laughs) Now, oh, who's taking my name in vain? Evening, Nord. Aunt Katie thinks it would be a good idea if you blacked my eyes for me. She approves of caveman tactics. Well, I've been told that sometimes that's the only way to make an impression on the female of the species. Would you like to walk up to old Baldy, Lisa, and count the stars? Why not? You're a fool, Lisa. Don't trust her, Nord. She's a dangerous woman. Oh, I guess I can take care of myself. <laughs> you like this country, Lisa? Yes, I guess I do. It's so, so wide open, so big and calm and beautiful. You love it very much, don't you, Nord? Well, it's my home. I guess I wouldn't trade it for any place on earth. Well, why should you? It's so wonderful to stand here on this hill and realize that for miles and miles, everything as far as the eye can reach belongs to you. Somehow it doesn't mean very much unless you've got someone to share it with. Lisa... Will you? Will I what? Marry me, of course. I guess it's no surprise to you that I love you, Lisa. But I had to wait till I'd given you time to know me better. You see, we Kendalls are like that. 
When we love, it's once and forever. Oh, no, you old-fashioned darling. Don't you know that love like that went out with hoop skirts? What other kind of love is there? Oh, I don't know. Modern love, more fireworks, more excitement. That's not love, Lisa. Oh, listen to the man. Now, just what do you think love is? Why, this. Oh, no, no. No, I'm... You do love me, Lisa. Whether you realize it or not, you love me. No, I... No one ever kissed me like that. Because no one ever loved you like I do. No, I... I've been a fool. I didn't realize how... Oh, what's that? Just some doggone fool driving up the path this time of night. Might have run over us. Hey there, beautiful. Just who do you think you're talking to? Lisa Coburn, the most gorgeous female in this little old world. Mead? Right the very first time. But, Mead, what are you doing here? Well, you practically asked me to come, Lisa. And you knew darn well I would. Oh. I hope you're satisfied, Lisa. That good for nothing Mead Warner showing up like that. I, I don't know. It's funny. But the things you want and plan and wish for till you're blue in the face are, all seem so empty and meaningless when you get them. What did I tell you? Well, good night, darling. And I hope your conscience bothers you all night. Don't worry. It probably will. Good. Oh, dear. Why does life have to be so complicated? Nord and Mead. Mead and Nord. Mead. Funny how sort of anemic he looks out here in the wide open spaces. I wonder if his shoulders have always been that narrow, or didn't I just notice? Oh, well, I may as well turn out the light and try to get a little sleep. Oh. Who is it? Oh, just a minute. Donna, where did I put my bedroom slippers now? Ah, here they are. Coming. Me. Well, darling, here I am. Mead, you can't come in here. Oh, but I am in. Mead, you can't stay here. Whatever gave you such a crazy idea? Your letter slipped under my door. I didn't write you a letter. Oh, no? Then why was it signed? You're the only one around here that knows I used to call you boots. But, Mead, I swear to you, I didn't write you a letter. I lost your nerve, eh? Well, never mind, darling. It's all right. I'm here and so are you, and that's what really matters. But Daphne... Don't worry about Daphne. I dropped her at Reno on my way out here. She'll be out of our way in another couple of months. And we can pick up just where we left off. But I don't want to pick up where we left off. Mead, I don't love you anymore. Oh, nonsense, honey. You've still got your feelings hurt, that's no. all. You belong to me, darling. Nothing is going to keep us apart from now on. Nothing in the world can bring us together again, Mead. Can't you understand that? Nothing, Lisa. Mead, don't. Keep away from me. Lisa. Lisa. I thought so. Daphne. So, this is the kind of fishing trip you were going on, Mead, my dear. Come in, Mr. Kendall. I want you to see what I've caught. Looks like nice, fat alimony. No, it's not my fault. I didn't want him to come in here. Oh, no? Well, what about the letter? Your darling boo. Oh. Won't that look well in headlines? No, tell me you don't believe her. It's a put-up job. Try to prove that in court. She can't. I'll say it's true every single solitary claim you make. No. I'll swear it's gospel. Mead. Thought you were smart framing me like this, didn't you? Well, I'm delighted. Mead. Absolutely and positively delighted. Because now Lisa will have to marry me, whether she wants to or not. No, I won't. Where's my coat? I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to marry anybody, ever. Lisa, where are you going? Somewhere. Anywhere where I won't have to look at a man again as long as I live. I hate you. All of you. <laughs> now what the... Oh, my gosh. Out of gas. Stranded in the mountains in the middle of the night. That would have to happen to me. Not that it's not your own fault, Lisa, my girl. If you'd looked at the gas meter... Oh, you're always so darned impulsive. That's your trouble. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but walk the rest of the way into town. Ten or fifteen miles. Oh, my gosh. Well, the sooner the quicker. Evening, sister. What's the hurry? Uh, where did you come from? No place in particular. Say, let's get a good look at you. Seems like I've seen you somewheres before. I don't think so. Sure I have. You're that red-headed gal Nord Kendall's gone and got himself all head up over. I don't see what Nord Kendall's emotional state has to do with you. Plenty, sister. I've been waiting three years to get even for the time he put me in jail on account of some of his cattle got mixed up with mine Let somehow. me by, please. I want to get to the town in time to catch that early morning train. You ain't going to catch no train, lady. Why not? 
You're going to stay right here with me until Nord Kendall comes across with a nice big ransom to get you back again. I'm sorry to disappoint Come you. Come on, but... sister. Where do you think you're taking me? A cave, a nice little cave, dry and warm. Nobody knows about it but me. I'm not coming. I won't walk one single step. You'll walk, sister, and light. And who's going to make me? This here little persuader. Oh, a revolver. Yes, ma'am. Now march. Wait. There's a car coming. Quick. Duck behind these rocks. No, no, I won't. Go ahead and shoot me if you like. You won't collect much ransom for a dead body. You got spunk, ain't you? All right, sister, we'll figure it out some other way. That's Nord Kendall's car coming up the road. Nord, then he did come after me. Look at him come. You'll be alone and unarmed or I miss my guess. What are you going to do? Collect $10,000 ransom or plug him full of holes. No. Maybe I'll get more satisfaction that way, come to think of it. No, no, I'll go with you. I'll do anything. Too late, sister. He's seen us. Oh, Pete Leonardo, what are you doing with that girl? Glad you asked, Mr. Kendall. I'm holding her for ransom, $10,000. Oh, no, you're not. Nod, Nod, keep away. He's got a gun. I'm not afraid of any yellow-livered outlaw. All right, then you ask for it. Nod, Nod. Goodness, she's coming through. I'll never forgive myself for this, Miss Katie. She wouldn't have run away if I hadn't doubted her, but seeing her in that man's arms like that all of a sudden, it made my head swim. I couldn't think. I couldn't move. Well, maybe it's better it happened this way, Nord. And as much as the doctor said, it's only a flesh wound. Maybe it'll teach her you can't go on playing with fire. <laughs> Unless you wear asbestos gloves. Lisa. Oh, I'm all right, Nord. How are you? Oh, darling, I'll never forgive myself. If anything had happened to you, I couldn't have gone on living. And when I saw you step in front of that revolver to try to save me... But I love you, Nord. I, I sort of realized it when I saw you in danger like that. And it's your kind of love. Forever and ever. Why, my darling. Then, please, you will believe me. I, I didn't ask me to come to my room. I knew it, darling. I knew it the minute you ran away. Because, well, when I came to think about it, I just knew you weren't that kind of a girl. Oh, my dear. And besides, when he showed me that letter to me, I knew in a minute it wasn't your handwriting. <laughs> Old Lady Sherlock has not. Oh, fiddlestick. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad you two are going to settle down and behave yourselves. It's about time I had some grand nieces and nephews. <laughs> You have been listening to a romantic drama featuring the love story girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. <laughs>